Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil Zero HD. Let's see, last time, we started exploring the laboratory, sent, uh, split up our characters and sent Billy up, which ended up fucking us over and led to our first death. Then, we did some leech swapping, and found our ride out of the laboratory. We also did a much more inventory management, Zero. and we'll have to do more in this episode. But we're, for the most part, done with the laboratory already once we get this tram running. Sorry, aerial cable car. And we're still entering an insane world. Alright, so first order of business is... Probably that inventory management I was talking about. So what we're going to do is fill up our inventories here. rebecca has got three slots, Billy's got two. So let's grab these. And these. And we're going to need the hook shot to get into that office over there. You stay here. Yeah. Follow me. Okay. Now we could change back to Rebecca's default outfit, but honestly, this one's practical enough, and it's not, you know, one of the silly ones, so I think we'll just stick with it for now. And because most of the cutscenes are in engine, we'll actually see her wearing it in the cutscenes. Alright, so that's combined, so we're gonna leave that. We're gonna do drop the ink ribbons. Rebecca doesn't need both of these healing items. And I think Billy dropped the thing we're gonna need around here somewhere. Oh no, wait, it's out the front door. We need the input regulator. You stay here. Yeah. So, Billy's gonna go get that. Actually, this would be a good time to just kind of move all our stuff to this room, so let's take a momentary break here just to do that, and then we'll get up there and get this cable car going. Alright, that actually didn't take me as long as I thought. We'd already moved most of the stuff, turns out. But uh, Rebecca's got the input and output regulator coils, so let's head up here with the grappling hook. And some good news here, we can finally ditch this thing. As we won't be needing it again. First things first, let's unlock that door. No, Rebecca, don't go out the door. Just wanted to unlock it. And obviously this just leads out here, which is now part of the room. <laughs> for some reason. Alright, so now that we got that running, we can get ready to leave. Say goodbye to that bloody hookshot. No longer will it plague me with its two space inventory. Why couldn't we use it like Ada and, you know, actually use it aggressively? Alright, so let's do a little bit of inventory shuffling again. Billy's got the grenade launcher with him, but not equipped so he doesn't fire it. Do I have enough space for a shotgun? I do. 
All right, looking good. We're gonna leave the handgun ammo there for a moment, though we'll have to move it onto the tram before we leave. I keep calling it a tram, Follow but I guess me. it's a cable okay. car. Switch to the shotgun. Honestly, I could just leave the pistol here, but whatever. Let's uh, get in here and start moving stuff. Well, bye, Billy. <gasps> Alright, all sorts of problems. Yet another Eliminator has knocked one of our team into a hole. They seem to really like doing that. There's a Leech Man right on top of us, and the power for the cable car is out. So we're gonna have to deal with those problems one at a time, kind of in reverse order. Please don't get grabbed. Cool. Thankfully, this leech man always seems to have less health, I guess because they drop him right on top of you. So that's good. Leaves it with four Molotovs, which is enough to take out another leech man. And yeah. Looking good. So, we're down to one character. Again. Unlike uh, with the, prime, the time where Rebecca fell in a hole, this is not quite as pressing. You know, obviously we don't have to worry about any sort of time limit or anything, because we have no idea what happened to Billy. He could be dead, honestly. But for now, we're just going to have to get this cable car running. And then get out of here. I believe in the Perryverse novelization, it was actually just the Leech Man that shoved Billy off. What's going on in here? Fucking leeches? Pulling out my stuff? These leeches were prepared to sacrifice their lives to stop us from leaving. So basically all they did is unplug the regulators, just to be annoying. See, in most playthroughs I really do tend to give Rebecca the flamethrower with napalm grenades to d take care of the leechmen, but her faster attack speed with the molotov really does seem to make her the better choice for that. I was always hesitant just because of how slow Billy is with it, that her lower health would just fuck her over with that, but yeah, the faster throw seems pretty nice. It gives you time to just run around the leechman like we did there. In a typical playthrough of this, I don't think I normally ever get by those leech men without taking some hits, without using the grenade launcher. Alright, so that's back online. Our inventory is pretty full, so we're gonna have to drop some shit. God, we got a lot of healing items, and Billy has two or three more healing items on him, because of course I filled up his inventory just in case we find him again, or at least find his uh, body and our stuff. So hopefully he went in the direction that this cable car goes.
and say goodbye to the laboratory, because this time for real, we won't have to come back. There's no fuck-ups that will require us to backtrack. In fact, I'm not completely sure if you can backtrack to here. I mean, there is a way, a very roundabout way, but I don't think you can take the cable car back. Then again, I can't actually see a reason why you can't, so maybe you can. And what do we got here? Got ourselves a gun just waiting here for us. Let's just snag that while we're here. So, in this game the magnum is not at all optional or hard to find, it's just straight up in front of you. Unlike most Resident Evil magnums, it isn't a revolver. Instead, it seems to just be another 1911 of some sort. Actually, I guess 1911s don't have that lower slide sort of thing, so I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. But, it means we can finally use those magnum rounds we picked up, even though we don't have very many. Let's get out of here. Um, this stuff I think we can mostly leave in here for now. Some more green herbs. Actually, let's use one to top off our health. Just because we're kind of flush with uh, healing items right now, so I'm not too worried about wasting these. As long as we have one for when we find a red herb. So where are we now? We are in the factory. Now you might remember a certain other umbrella facility that had a cable car that led to a factory. And you'll see some familiar looking areas here. Hold on a sec. Okay, I thought that said Lapge Elevator, but it actually is just a rust spot and an operation center. Well, nothing there. In fact, this area might look fairly familiar, but of course, higher resolution. And this room. So I think it's pretty neat that they had a little nod here to RE2, this whole area. Kind of implying that Umbrella has a sort of default setup for some of their facilities. Though this seems like a pretty extensive amount of stuff to have just stopped using. Because if we've been keeping track with these notes, the facility wasn't actually closed because of the outbreak. The outbreak happened later. They just sort of stopped using it. Alright, there's a keyhole there. And we've seen this sort of mini elevator next to the giant hexagonal elevator shaft. And even this room. Hmm. 
Well, that looks fairly familiar. At least we, Mr. X isn't sneaking up on us here. Instead, hunters are... Thankfully, the magnum is enough to blast away hunters. Which is the reason I kept the tight grip on it when we found it. We kind of have to do this in the reverse order of Resident Evil 2, instead of just taking the elevator down, or at least taking the elevator down in the, the scenario A, because of course the B character had to recall the elevator in a similar way, with the similar key. And thus, if this is the same sort of elevator, it should lead to another secret umbrella laboratory, similar to the one in Raccoon City. Alright. Got a lot of stuff lying around here. However, we never get to get go see the rest of the factory, because that's sealed off. It's a lot of stuff we're going to have to pick up again. Once we get settled in. Of course, the big thing that's missing here is the train. But we don't need the train to be in place to actually be able to use this. I was gonna kinda wonder there if this was the eventual destination of the Moonlight Express. I think Moonlight Express? Was that what it was called? I've already forgotten. The train from the beginning. But it wouldn't fit on here, obviously, except for the front car. Ecliptical Express, that's what it was. Alright, so now we're down in the Umbrella Labs. Again, very familiar looking area. Though we can't get in the security room. I don't know why there wouldn't be a need to search that place. You'd think there would be ammo and all sorts of goodies in there. There's the elevator that leads down into the lab, and then there's the backup elevator, which leads to the power plant kind of area. She doesn't really seem to want to search anything, though, for some reason. Don't shoot! You're alive. Are you okay, Rebecca? Where is everybody? They should have arrived here before me. Haven't you seen them? That's unfortunate. If we go straight from here, we should arrive at an old mansion which Umbrella uses for research. Come on, let's go. Wait, I've got to find Billy. Billy Cohen? You mean you found that criminal? Yes, but we got separated and... No point worrying about him. He won't make it. Come on, let's go. Sir, please. I need to find him. Don't worry, I'll catch up with you. Rebecca, all right, just be careful. I never saw him again. Spoilers, Rebecca. So that's Captain Enrico Marini of the Bravo team, who we haven't really seen since the opening cutscene. And yet again, the dialogue between them is like completely ignorant of the situation. All they ever talk about is Billy. He's not like, man, have you run into all these creatures around here? Or anything like that. It's just like, oh, the other stars members should be here. And then he comes to his unfortunate end, and we really do never see him again. Which is a little odd because Rebecca, you know, ends up with the other Bravo team members in the Spencer Mansion, but I guess they all get split up. And she ends up with Richard. Well,. There's not much down here. We can't go into the lab, unfortunately. It's mostly just a nod to the original lab, but if we look over here... There is actually an elevator. 
Uh, okay, we got an inventory slot if we need it. And a good amount of shotgun ammo, so we should be alright here. So let's check it out. Oh, I'm gonna turn it on first. I don't know why that's the case. Usually elevators don't have a... Oh, shit. Shit, I don't remember we needing a key. Uh, what did I forget? There might be a key over here, actually. Yep, there it is. That's why I don't remember there being a key, because it's right here. And I'm not sure that, that we can take the elevator back up. Or this elevator, rather. Alright, now we got the elevator key. So let's just pop that in there. And this should connect us back to where we came from. Oh, of course. I'm not facing the button quite center. So, now I'm just going to wait for it. There's absolutely no reason for that shutter to come down. Say hello to the T-001 Prototype Tyrant. Prototype for the T-002 Tyrant, that is the final boss of the first Resident Evil game. He's uh, not nearly as tough as his counterpart, because again, he's a prototype and not quite perfect. As long as we stay on his human arm side, we're mostly safe, though he does have some close range swipes. But we basically just need to uh, take him down before the elevator gets here. Oh, we're on the arm side. Let's stay away from that. Again, we don't want to stay close to him, though, because he will lash out behind him. Shit, that's our magnum ammo. Oh, we got a poke and a stab. Okay, that's bad. That's going to almost kill us. Come on, Rebecca. You really need to get up. Alright. Shotgun should be enough to handle him. He also is pretty easily stunned. That's the attack you really want to watch out for. Thankfully, again, he doesn't have invincibility frames. And that's it. He's not nearly as tough as the later Tyrants. Also one of the few Resident Evil games where you fight a Tyrant that isn't the final boss. Or the almost final boss in the case of Resident Evil 2. Since Nemesis is also a Tyrant. Alright, so now that he's dealt with, we have pretty free access to this elevator. So uh, let's check out where these go. Start from the top. And you'll notice that this elevator is its own screen, so we could actually put a bunch of stuff in here if we wanted to move it around. So, back when we first arrived at the training facility, I mentioned that we should keep a certain door in mind. Notice too that there's a door there. Uh, just kind of keep that in mind for later. We can't get to it right now because of the fire. And yeah, that's this door here. The fire has dissipated enough that we can go through here. And this is basically our link back to the training facility if we ever forgot anything. Or, you know, we were desperate for help and left some behind. So it's at least nice that that doesn't completely screw you. But, that doesn't help us right now, because we've emptied out the training center. And 
that's a familiar sound. Not a very good sound, considering... Actually, I was about to say, considering we used all our magnum rounds in that fight. However... Got a whole box of them right here. Because that is the webbed sound of a hunter's feet. Honestly, if I wanted to be pretty conservative with ammo, we could just blast him with the uh, shotgun. Especially because he tried to leap there, so that would have threw him on the ground. But, honestly, I don't want to waste the health. It's funny, there was uh, someone just bitching at me on one of the old Resident Evil series about being too conservative with my ammo. So let's leave this here, because we're going to want to move our stuff. Because if we look at the map here, this is connected to where we came in. So this will be how we kind of all transfer all of our stuff into the factory. Got another set of healing items. Man, we are just going to be running over with this stuff by the end of the game. Honestly, unless we start doing really poorly, we're going to have more of this than we can actually really use before the end of the game. Unless I start using them frivolously, which I could, I guess. Okay, so let's leave this stuff here. I think six slots will be just enough to get all this stuff. Even though we have the Magnum now, we're still going to want to hang on to the Molotovs, because despite being a very powerful weapon, the Magnum is actually still not very good against Leechmen. I think it takes maybe... I want to say like three shots to kill them? I think the each shot will like blow a limb off. But it's again a waste of magnum ammo. Like even hunters are kind of a waste of magnum ammo because they don't have a huge amount of health. But they are very dodgy fuckers and I don't want to try to hit them with a shotgun. <laughs> Especially if there's more than one, like the two in the breeding room. Okay, so and yeah, we got a full load. I'm still going to want to go up to the top level and grab that stuff. There's some grenade ammo and stuff up there. We don't have our grenade launcher because, again, Billy has that, but we'll get it back eventually. Unlike the time that I lost my grenade launcher in Code Veronica after not using any ammo for it for the entire game and nearly not being able to finish the game because of that. Because there, it is possible to permanently <laughs> lose access to that. Okay, we're full up. Uh, I think we only need to grab some handgun ammo and... Handgun ammo and grenade rounds, right? I'm asking you like you can answer, but... Let's uh, double up there, and then we'll finish off here. Actually, since there's an ink ribbon here and a typewriter, I think we'll call it here for episode 9. And, uh, because we made some pretty good progress, we got to a new area... And uh, we're on the search for Billy, so we've got a goal for next time. We even killed ourselves a tyrant. So next time, we'll head down to that last floor of the elevator, because we didn't check the fourth floor. And uh, hopefully we'll find some sign of Billy down there. But until then, this is just Rebecca and Shadefire, and I'll see you all next time. Till then, you folks all take care.